we've been in a series called Christmas Playlist. I've had fun with this series because um, it's one of those that you got to get get to get to have fun with Christmas playlist, and we've been picking different Christmas carols to use and base on the theme uh, that we've been preaching preaching on. First, we did joy to the world, and we talked about the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and then we said uh, we talked about come all ye faithful. We talked about being faithful and being full of faith last week, and this week we're going to be talking about the carol silent night, silent night, as we sung and as the worship team team sung so beautifully um, at the beginning of service, silent night. Uh, And I want to read to you today John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Now, first of all, you have to understand that this is not the traditional Christmas story, but yet it is the same account that some of the gospels would make of the Christmas story. There are two gospels Matthew and, Matthew and Luke, they make a specific account of the birth of Jesus. While Mark and John, they don't really talk about the birth of Jesus as much and in detail, but yet John gives, I believe, a wonderful, just perfect overview of the coming of Jesus. It doesn't, it, it, there's no babies in mangers in the story of John, with John in this gospel. There's no magi. We three kings of Orientar bearing gifts to the tribe. There's none of that. There's no, there's no shepherds. There's no angels. Woo! You know, there's none of that moment. There's no Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem. But there's just a, a wonderful overview. So I hope you're not mad at me today, but I want to jump off maybe the traditional, and we'll read the Christmas story on the 24th, okay? I'm going to jump off the traditional route today, and we're going to dive into John chapter 1. John chapter 1, it says this. I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 5. It says, in the beginning was the Word. Now, he's talking about the beginning, the beginning of all things, all creation. Go back to Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. That has been made. Verse 4, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Pray with me one more time because I need Jesus today. I need the Holy Spirit. Father, today we thank you that your word does not return to you void. It accomplishes everything that you sent it to do, God. God, I just remove myself. Just take me out of the equation. We want to hear your voice today. We want to be impacted by you. God, that you would do in the room what only you can do. And we thank you that you are the light of the world. God, that no matter what dark times we find ourselves in, dark thoughts, dark moments, dark positions, No matter what surrounds us, we recognize you're the light of the world. And even the darkness can't overcome that light. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tell you a story today that um, that, that, that's probably one of my favorite stories to tell. And uh, so no doubt that we were were pregnant. uh, Megan was with child. There's your Christmas story. Megan was pregnant, and we said, we have to go on one last getaway. Some people call it a baby moon. You have your honeymoon, but then you have your baby moon. You go out before the baby comes to keep you up at night and bring joy to your life. We decided to go on a baby moon, and my dad had recently just bought a cabin. We're, again, from the U.S., and he bought this cabin in North Georgia that I had not been to yet. And we decided, hey, Dad, is it free this weekend we want to go? And we're from South Alabama. I need to give you some context because it never snows there. It never gets cold enough to snow. That we, we, we live by the beach. But this one particular weekend, like the Thursday or Friday before we decided to leave, there was something that took place in northern Alabama called Snowmageddon. 
And this never takes place. They called it Snowmageddon because it just snowed a little bit and everything was closed because nobody knows what to do in the snow. Everything shut down, Snowmageddon, and we gave it a couple days. We decided, okay, we're still going to drive up. I think everything's cleared by now. It's hot enough. The ice is going to melt. And so we start driving to North Georgia into to this cabin that we've never been to before. And it was one of these, like, your GPS is going to stop working after this point. Here's the paper instructions on how to get there. And so we're driving up there, and we notice there's a little bit of ice under bridges and then we start driving up into the mountains and we realize also again from South Alabama both Rays in South Alabama never driven in snow before so we start climbing up the mountain and it just there, there's becomes more snow you start seeing it in the woods now you're actually driving on the snow so I'm driving carefully pretending like I know what I'm doing but I completely don't this is what guys do and driving through and, and then all of a sudden we approach this uh, this gate we drive through this gate we're following the instructions and it says just a little bit further you know and you go up this this hill and so I go to go up this hill and it's the steepest hill we've been up yet and I start going up and then all of a sudden I can't go up any farther the car begins to slide down the hill now granted it is 1 a.m. in the morning because for some reason we decided to leave late 1 a.m. in the morning it's pitch black there's no street lights we're in the middle of the woods it starts to go go we go up this hill it starts to slide down and so again, I know exactly what I'm doing on the surface, but on the inside, I have no idea. So I say, the best thing to do is just gun it. So we end up back at the, down, at the bottom of the hill, and I just press on the gas as hard as possible. And I give it is all I have up this mountain. And I'm in a little Nissan Altima, a little coupe, and I start, whoa, you know, up this thing. My tires start spinning, and Megan is screaming at me like she's never screamed at me before. Stop the car! And I contemplate her suggestion, and I decide to do it again. We're going to make it up this, it's 1 a.m. in the morning. I don't know how far the cabin is now. We start to go up this mountain, and then oh, I try this four or five times, and start, I, start, I start seeing the engine smoking or steaming. I don't know what was happening. We decided, okay, we're going to take out the baggage, and we're going to walk up the, the mountain. We had no idea what the cabin looked like, never been there. We start, it's pitch black. When things are pitch black in the woods, you start hearing bears, you start hearing lions and tigers. Oh my. You say, th things that aren't there, you start hearing and they're there. You know, you, 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 and, and Megan, is, Megan is freaking out at this moment. She's like, we're going home in the morning, you know? And, she, and I'm like, we have no light. We're just climbing up. We're, we're trying to figure out, I think we knocked on the wrong cabin door. We like showed up on somebody's doorstep. We weren't there. Everything was pitch black. And she was, uh, listen, she's not in here to defend herself. I'm sorry. Um, she won't watch this later, hopefully. Um, but she was, she was so scared in this moment, and I was completely brave. Let's set the record straight. And so I, we're, we're climbing, we finally get there, and, she's, and she's, she was so afraid, and so she was mad, too, at this moment. And she's like, we're leaving in the morning. We're done. This is done. We're gone in the morning. And so what she does is we, we go to sleep, and, we, you know, one of these moments, you just don't talk as a, as, as a couple because she's mad. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. I just have to walk all the way, and we don't talk. And then all of a sudden, we wake up in the morning, and the sun begins to rise over the mountains, and it begins to glisten off the snow. And there's this big, grand window that looks out into the woods over the tops of the trees, and you see the mountains, and we're just breathtaking. And, and Megan says to me, oh, maybe we should stay. How many of you know that things are different when the lights are on? <laughs> things look differently, feel differently when the lights are on. And I, I just wonder today how many of us are living in the dark. Let me explain to you because I think it's so easy for us and in our world today, to live in the dark. We don't have to look around too far and to realize that it seems like the world just gets darker and darker. It seems like the times we live in just get darker and darker. Harder to live in with good morals and good standards and, uh, and a belief system that believes in, 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 in Scripture. It, it just seems to get harder and harder. But oftentimes I wonder are we living, maybe certain areas of our life we're living in the dark. Living in the dark maybe can look like I'm living without purpose. Well, I'm, li I'm living without a sense of, man, I have a purpose and direction on my life. I have a calling on my life. 
And we, we, so, so many times we just kind of go through the motions and we go through the cycle and we're doing circles in life because we're living in the dark. We live without hope for the future. We just kind of get like an Eeyore mentality and say, oh, well, the world's going to hell, you know. Oh, well, just along for the ride. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the time. We live without a we live without a hope for the future. We live without a hope for the future in our own life and our own future. Sometimes living in the dark can look like chaos. In fact, in Genesis, God talks about how the world was in chaos. It was a it was a formless void. It was chaotic until there was light. It looks like chaos. It looks a little bit like me trying to get my kids ready for school. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like chaos. We can, we can live with a fear or anxiety. We're living in the dark. Insecurities. It's living in the dark. Bondage is there in the dark. It's, it, the, the, the dark place is the place where you still have the bits of bondage, the things that are holding you back, the things that are trying to keep you from moving forward. We're living in the, in the dark. The Christmas story was set in a dark time. The whole Christmas story was surrounded by a time in the world of darkness. So they, they talk about in scriptures, in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there was 400 years of silence, they call it. 400 years. From the prophet Malachi to the coming of Jesus, God did not speak, God did not speak to any prophet until John, until John began to come and began to speak, the one calling in the wilderness. 400 years, no, no man of God, no woman of God, nobody spoke out. God didn't speak through anybody. It was the 400 years of silence. It was 400 years of darkness. It was 400 years of oppression and captivity. But when Jesus was born, just a, just a baby in the manger, all of a sudden, 400 years of silence was broken. The light came on. The light came on. Jesus broke that 400 years of silence when he was born. How many of you know when, you, when, you, when your first kid was born, there was some moments of silence broken? I'm talking about a different silence, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, he, he, it, was a, it was a moment in history that said, you've been through dark times, but because of Jesus, the silence is broken. Here's, here's what I want you to capture today. You will live in the light when the light lives in you. Let me say this one more time because I need you to capture this. You'll live in the light when the light lives in you. The light's name, as we read in John 1, his name is Jesus. He is the light of the world. He is the one that came in the middle of darkness, born in a manger, to bring light to the darkness, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring peace to the chaos, to bring calm to the storm. Jesus broke the silence. And you and me, we will live in the light When the light lives in us. When the light lives in us. Because listen, in the same way that Jesus was born in a manger, in the same way that he laid in that manger, he can lay inside of your life, he can lay inside of your heart, and he can light up your world. And he can light up your life. And he can light up the world around you. I want to talk to you today, three things quickly before we end. What happens when the light lives in you? What takes place when the light lives in you? First of all, have, we have to understand before we just, we just need to set a precedent, we need to set uh, the foundation here. We, all we have to do is receive the light. We have to receive the light who lives in us. This is a moment of salvation. When I, say, when I say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life, I'm committing my life to you. Would you come and make me a new creation, as the Bible says? The light is being turned on in your life. And so those of you who've made the decision in the room to say, I'm going to follow Jesus, I wanna, I wanna, you've made that decision in your life. You've probably experienced something take place. Maybe you didn't feel goosebumps or anything like that, but you, you experienced maybe after that moment the light coming on. 
You experience reading the word differently. You experience seeing life differently. And it just maybe wasn't overnight, but it was as if the light was illuminating things for you to see completely differently. And it's this process. But I think also as believers, as people who have made that decision, at the same time we can have made that decision and the light can live in us, but yet we don't let it shine in the places it needs to shine. We can, we can, call, we can cover the light up. We can cause it to be dimmed in our life. It's not just about a one-time decision, but it's about a daily decision to let the light live in you. What happens when the light lives, lives in you? First of all, God illuminates your heart. God illuminates your heart. 2 Corinthians 4 says this. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. He wants to illuminate your heart. What does that mean? What does that mean? Do, do I need to, why do I need my heart illuminated? Because you need, you, when, when you come to Jesus, when you allow him to illuminate your heart, he wants to show you who you are. I, just, I, I remember before the light came on in my life, I, had, I was chasing a false identity. I was trying to figure out who I was. God wants to show you who you are. When the light comes on in your life, you will begin to realize who you are. God wants to reveal to you inside of your heart the things that are poisoning your life. The things that are holding you back. See, this is the thing about, this is the thing about Christianity. When you give your life to Jesus, it's not the easy button. So many times we think, oh, it's going to be easy. But, but man, God, when God begins to deal with the areas in your heart, the things in your heart, Oh, that shouldn't be there. There's some pride there that shouldn't be there. There's some lust there that shouldn't be there. When he begins to illuminate that in your life, you see, nobody likes the, the, the dark corners of your house where the spider webs live to be illuminated. One of the things I, I just uh, absolutely, um, absolutely hate is a strong word. That's not a good word to use. Dislike um, about spiders is I'm not afraid of spiders, but for some reason there's a culture in my home my kids do it because my wife has done it. Every time there's a spider, a speck that looks like a spider, anything that looks like a cobweb or a bug, I am now officially the exterminator. And it's always in the most inconvenient time when I've sat down, I'm comfortable, everything's done. Oh, do you see that spider? How do you see that? How do you see that? I don't know how you see that. Stop looking. That's my friend. His name is Fred. I don't know. Like, leave him alone. He needs a home too, you know? But I'm always like, and now my kids do it, you know? They, they, they make me come get the spider. They make me come get the bugs and I'm trying to train my boy. I'm like, be a boy, you know? Just kill it, smash it. Don't tell your mom. Like, get rid of it. I don't, this is your new job here. It, it, this, is, this is the way our heart is. We like to keep the corners in our heart dark because of what we might find there. But when God illuminates that corner, we might see something we don't like. But it was meant to be pulled away it was meant to be taken out it was meant to be highlighted it was meant to be shown to us he reveals those things poisoning our life he frees us from what's those things that are holding us back listen God wants to illuminate your heart when the light lives in you the first thing that's illuminated is your heart but God also will illuminate your path he'll illuminate your your path Psalms 119 says your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Your word. You see, God, we just read that in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And it was through him all things were made. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The word of God is the light and the lamp unto my path. God wants to illuminate the purpose on your life. I wonder how many people are asking, God, what is my purpose? What am I meant to do? What direction am I meant to take? What decision am I meant to do? What am I supposed to do? God wants to illuminate your path. When the light lives in you, you have access to your path being illuminated. You have access to him. Sometimes we just need to go to him and say, God, will you illuminate my purpose here? God, what decision am I meant to make here? Will you show me something? Will you reveal something to me? Reveal yourself, God. 
He wants to show you your purpose. He wants to give you direction. He wants to give you hope for your future. God illuminates your path. God illuminates your path. This is one of the, one thing I see so many people, I think, and just living in this, man, what am I meant to do? What am I meant to do? I think even, even for me, it, it, we, we just, we're, in a, we're in a culture where there's so many voices, there's so many things coming from this direction and this direction. Well, my path. I don't need somebody else's opinion to illuminate my path. I need God to illuminate my path. Because when God illuminates my path, it's the path I'm meant to go without being tripped up, without being held up. God illuminates your path. God illuminates, then lastly, your life for others to see. God illuminates your life for others to see. So God will illuminate your heart inside of you. God will illuminate the things. He wants to deal with your heart. He wants to deal with your character. He's still dealing with me. God is for me, but yeah, he's, he's still working on me. Come on, that's good news for somebody today because maybe you logged in or you walked in thinking, I gotta be perfect. Look at all these people. They're, they're Christians, they're believers. I don't feel like I, I fit in. I don't feel like I should be there. I don't, I, but listen, hey, God's still working on you just like he's working on your neighbor, just like he's working on the pastor. God's still working on me. He wants to illuminate your heart. He wants to illuminate your path. But he also wants to illuminate your life so that others can see because your life is a beacon. I, I, there was one quote that says, I might, get it, I might not say it uh, word for word, but it says, preach the gospel always and sometimes use words. Preach the gospel always and sometimes use words. Your life should be a message for people to see. People should see Jesus in you. People should see the life of Jesus in you. They should, see the, they should see the light in you. But listen, they can only see the light in you when the light's dealt with your heart, when the light's dealt with your purpose and your direction. And then people will see you will become a city on a hill. Matthew chapter 5 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And I, and, and I love this because, listen, you can't make the light up on your own. You can't do it on your own. It has to live in you. You're just the lantern. You're just the vessel. And you have to allow the light to live in you and shine out of you. Your life has to become transparent so that people can see. Listen, I need you to understand today. I'm not, just, I'm not talking to people in full, full-time ministry. I'm not talking to people... I'm not talking to people who serve at church. I'm talking to anybody and everybody who's listening. You have an eternal purpose. You have an eternal purpose that God's laid on your life. And that doesn't mean you have to pack bags and go live in another country and give up everything. So sometimes God will call you to give up some things. But you have an eternal purpose. You have an eternal purpose in your home. You have an eternal purpose to shine light into your workplace. You have an eternal purpose to illuminate the town, the village, the city that you live in. You're a city on a hill. You're a city on a hill. You're a, you're a, you're a, you're a lighthouse and people's ships are, are, are going through the storm called life and they need people to be a beacon of light so that they don't smash against the rocks. People need us to be light to the world. And it's all because of Jesus. John 8, and I'm going to close. John 8, 12, it says this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It's, it, it's, it's about allowing Jesus to illuminate my heart. It's about allowing Jesus to illuminate my direction. Oh, I'm so guilty of this. I make too many decisions without asking Jesus to illuminate it. What if we make all of our decisions with the illumination of 
Jesus shining on our path? What if we made it with that kind of clarity? What if, what if, what if we allowed him? What if we, what if we said, God, what am I meant to do? What, what, what am I meant to do with this project? God, what, what direction do you want to take this? What am I meant to say to my coworker? What am I, what am I, what am I meant to do with, my, with the time that you've given me at home? What, am I, what am I meant to do with this? How, God, God, what decision do you want me to make with my kids? God, God, will you show me? Will you eliminate my path? Show me, show me what school I'm meant to put the kids in. God, will you, will you illuminate who my spouse is supposed to be? Will you show that to me? Will you illuminate the, the right timing and the right person? Will, will that just be clear instead of me trying to make it clear? Illuminate my path, God. And God, ultimately, would, could we just be could we just be lanterns? Could we just be a torch that allows God, Jesus, to live in us and illuminate around us so that people can see? That's what the church is about. Listen, people shouldn't find out about Jesus because of uh, the church's Instagram. People shouldn't find out about the gospel and the good news for their life, that they have a, a purpose and a hope for their future because of because of an online video. I'm grateful that we have it all so that it can take place. But the church should be the place where people hear about Jesus. I'm not talking about a Sunday morning service. I'm talking about you. People should see it in your life first. People should come to know Jesus because they've seen the light in your life. Can you stand to your feet with me today if you're in the room? Maybe you're watching online, maybe you're in here today and you say, yeah, I've never actually made that decision to allow the light to live in me. I've, I've never made a decision to follow Jesus, the light of the world. I've never made that decision in life to say I'm, 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 allow, I'm allowing him to be the Lord of my life. His purpose, his will for my life, not mine. Maybe you've never made that decision. Or maybe you're in here, you just walked away from him. Maybe, maybe you just kind of went a whole nother direction. Maybe it was like a prodigal son type moment. And today you want to say, you know what, I, I do. I, I, maybe my whole life isn't darkness. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe there's just those areas that you want God to illuminate. If that's you today, can we just close our eyes in the room? If that's you today and you're in the room, can you just lift a hand? You can put it down after you lift it. Just say, that's me. I'm making a decision today to follow him. I'm making a decision to follow him or rededicate my life to him. If you're watching online today, then if that's you making that decision. Listen, guys, this is the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. Listen, you're not going to be perfect tomorrow. It's not the, it's not the whiteboard. <laughs> he, he puts a robe of righteousness on you. Yes, he from the moment of salvation he sees you new he sees you clean he sees you through his lens God when God looks at you he sees Jesus but that doesn't mean you your life will be perfect your behavior will be perfect because God is still working on you but it is the greatest decision you will ever make to make that decision if that's you today there's going to be a QR code on the screen in here and there's one that's popping up online I want you to scan that it's today is my day We'd love for you to fill out that today is my day digital card. We just want to send you some resources on maybe how to walk this out and give you uh, an opportunity to receive guidance as well. We'd love to just connect with you in that way. Everybody else in here, I want to pray for you and believe God is going to illuminate our life this year. God is going to illuminate our hearts so that we can even step into a new year with, with boldness. Let me pray. Father, today, I thank you that you are the light of the world. And God, you live in us. My goodness, I could look at my own life and I know my, I know my deepest, darkest secrets. I know my deepest, darkest sins. But yet you still live in me. But yet you still want to have relationship with with me and not only that but God you still want to use me you still 
want to use me. And that blows my mind. I can't even wrap my head around. So God, today I pray that you would illuminate our hearts. God, for those in here who've maybe kept some corners dark, God, that the light would come on so that we could, so that those things that don't need to be, that bitterness, that unforgiveness in our hearts could be revealed so that, we, that it could be removed. God, would you illuminate our path? There's people who are watching online or in the room today who are making decisions and looking for direction and looking for hope for their future. God, illuminate our path today. Illuminate our path. And God, that we would be a beacon of light to other people. We would look around and see that we're not just going through life, but our our, our light shines so others can see. And if you made that decision today to follow Jesus for the first time, maybe you just want to pray this. Because the Bible says when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So you may just say something simply like this. The point is not always exactly what you say, but it's the belief and the faith in your heart as you say it, to believe that he's doing a work in you. Say, Lord, I give you my life. I surrender my will for your will. You can have my life. I thank you that you died for me, rose again, so that I could approach you and have relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give it up for everybody watching online and in the room who just made that decision? Amen and amen. Come on, one more time. Let's give God a shout of praise today. Merry Christmas, everybody. Amen.